Hello guys, in this video I am going to talk about dynamic programming. So I will talk about what is dynamic programming, where we can apply it and uh, I'll, then I will give you some examples of dynamic programming. So let's get started. So first of all, what is dynamic programming? Okay. So I'll say dynamic programming is all about remembering past results. Okay. Well, this is a very nice statement. So, how do we explain it? Let me just give an example. What if I ask you to find the sum of these ones? So, you can find the sum by counting the number of ones. Okay. So, it will be 3. Now, if I ask you to find the sum of these ones. Okay. Now you will instantly say that it will be 4. So how did you arrive at this result so fast? So you can see that we have remembered our past calculation. And we saw that we have just added one more to our previous problem. So it will be 3 plus 1 that is equal to 4. So this is what dynamic programming is all about. So now we will talk about where we can apply dynamic programming. So we can apply, let me just say dynamic programming dp in short, okay, it will be easy. So where we can apply dp, so first, so the problem, in the problems where uh, these two properties hold, the first property is optimal substructure, optimal substructure and the second property is overlapping sub problems okay if these two properties holds then we can apply dynamic programming to our problem okay so now let me explain what is optimal substructure so in this problem this sum problem can be stated as a function sum of let's say 4. So sum of 4 can be converted to sum of 3 plus 1. So our bigger problem can be found using smaller sub problem. So this is what is called optimal substructure. When the bigger problem can be found using the sub problems that property is called optimal substructure. Now what is overlapping sub problems? Overlapping sub problems is when we, when we have some problems which are repeating again and again to find our bigger problem. So let me just give example of Fibonacci numbers. So Fibonacci numbers are defined as Fib of n equals Fib of n minus 1 plus Fib of n minus 2. So this is the definition of Fibonacci numbers. Now if I ask you what will be the fib of 5? We can find it using fib of 4 plus fib of 3. Okay. So now we have to find fib of 4 and fib of 3. So we can find fib of 4 uh, as uh, like fib of 4 equals fib of 3 plus fib of 2. So we can make a tree for this problem. So I have to find 4, 5. I can find using 4 and 3. Now I have to find for 4. I can find using 3 and 2. I have to find for 3, 2 and 1. Okay, 2, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0 and so for 2, 1 and 0. So the fib of 0 equals 0 and fib of 1 equals 1. These two are the base cases. Okay. So now in the when we find fib of 5 we have to find fib of 2 3 times 
and fib of 3 two times okay so we can see that uh, the sub problems are calculated again and again so this is called overlapping sub problems okay now how can we optimize our solution actually it is now of 2n we go of 2n complexity now this is a uh, very huge <coughs> like it will take uh, days to uh, calculate even fib of like 30 so how can we find uh, a fast solution so we can apply dp here so how do we apply dp so i said that dp is all about remembering past results so we can maintain a array or a hash table let me just maintain an array okay so these are indexes 0 1 2 3 and 4 and 5 okay now the base cases are defined already so fib of 0 equals to 0 fib of 1 equals to 1 now when we have to find fib of 5 okay so we have to find fib of 5 we will go to fib of 4 and fib of 3 so these are not calculated yet so for 5 we have to find fib of 4 and fib of 3 and for 4 we have to find fib of 3 and fib of 2 and for 2 we have to find fib of 1 and fib of 0 so fib of 1 and 0 are already defined so fib of 2 can be found so fib of 2 will be 1 plus 0 that is 1 ok now fib of 3 will be fib of 1 plus fib of 2 so it will be 2 and fib of 4 will be fib of 3 plus fib of 2 it will be 3 so and uh, now at last fib of 5 will be fib of 3 plus fib of 4 which is 5 so this way we, we don't have to do many calculations and uh, we can find our solution in ON complexity ok now this is called a top down approach for DP there are two approach, approaches for DP and one of them is top down now let me talk about the bottom of approach So in the bottom of approach, we go to the lowest case, I mean base case. So we just go to 0 and 1 and we found these two and then we go to 2 and we found uh, our fib of 2 then 3 and then 4 and uh, at last 5. So, this is called bottom approach. Okay. So, in the bottom approach, we go from bottom to the top. While in top, we ask the smaller sub problems to find our answer and then we form our final answer. So, these are the two approaches for DP. So, that's it for this video, guys. And in the next video, I will talk more about top-down and bottom-up approach for Fibonacci numbers. Thank you.